Hello everybody and thank you for coming back to the channel and to this challenge of building the rubber motor. So, again it's going to be broken down into different parts. So what the first part is going to be uh, cutting off the, the peg for the end. I've got some brass tubing for that. I, I made the hole to size so it should fit okay. The next challenge is that I need to make from aluminium tubing that I also have. I need to make a holder for that rubber and I need to expand it. For that I've ordered a vise, it's in the post I hope and I should be getting it in the next few days. Uh, I wanted a vise anyhow, right? I didn't just get it for that. But, uh, but I'm going to wait to do that. The next area is also then to build the... Um, to bend the hook for the propeller, which is, uh, which is going to be here and to make sure that it's got the right shape. I've done a couple, I think it's a lot about practice and I think I'll probably need to do, need to do some there. And uh, then also, before I go to the rubber topic, I've got to finish the propeller. As you might know, the propeller that I have now here on the plane is, uh, is, has two cores of a pitch. So I've tried to make another one, which is slightly better. Not much better, but slightly better. So I want to finish this one off, like I'm, I'm progressing slowly with it. I've got the last blade started already, so I hope that this one is better. And that was plan A, this is plan B. Plan C is a plastic propeller that I've got somewhere hidden away. I've got to look for it, so that's going to be plan C. But I want to give it a try with the, with the bolts of propeller. And then uh, challenging part of any rubber motor is installing the rubber. So what rubber to use and all these things. On the instructions it says uh, I should use, I think it's 10 strands of 3 16 and uh, 16 inches long and that's I think quite a lot. If it's 3 16 square it would be very very thick. If it's 3 16 wide then it, uh, it would be okay, maybe. I'm going to use the calculation from ME262A1. That, so thank you ME262A1 for for that tip on calculating the weight, the weight of the rubber and for the moment I've got like 3 meters of this rubber that I was told at the shop that it's, it's good for these things um, I'm not sure if it's going to be enough I, I got it for the hangar rat and then I also found in my stash this rubber which I think is something like 30 years old it, I think it comes from from my first Keelcraft I think it was a Gypsy, I never finished that one I was too young for that and um, I think that's where this comes from and uh, in, ter in terms of quality it seems to be quite good still I don't think you can focus but I, I stretch it and it seems to be quite good so I might want to use this then at least it gets used and at least to, to give it a try the good thing with the rubber motors of course is that can be they can be changed out uh, relatively easily but it's to practice to see how how to build them so those are the steps ahead of me so I'm probably going to start with the propeller that I have something to go on while I wait for the vise and then while I prepare also then the, the rubber so the propeller is going to be the carving shaping down sanding down eventually gluing and, uh, and probably painting also so let's see how this one goes so some updates first thing I think I've got the propeller pretty much finished it's also kind of balanced not entirely but more or less I was trying to balance it as I was doing the the blade separately the, the, it's still not glued together um, there was a lot of sawdust also but uh, I think it's kind of balanced so it's ready kind of for being glued and uh, and painted I realize also that if I'm going to put in the prop shaft uh, I'm going to have to paint it paint everything both the propeller and also then the cowling so I've uh, I found a design from I have to I'll tell you then what kind of uh, what squadron it was um, I think it was from the 9th Air Force 15th I can't remember now so I need to paint also the cowling so I'll be painting the inside it'll be all black and then the the cowling I believe it's going to be red so I have to do some painting before I go ahead which why not and also the propeller which will be black and the yellow yellow prop tips and then another fancy thing is um, I got a vise, very small, I, I don't know why I was expecting it bigger if I ordered the smallest one I could find, uh, so this is a little bit of an unboxing and let's see, let's see what it looks like, it's an unboxing within a project, it's always fun to receive new tools and here we have the cheapest vise on the
and here is the the little toy vice okay and uh, I think it's two inches opening which is like what's that like five centimeters maybe looks okay looks fine so that's that's going to be useful I hope if it's kind of flat to be able to do some a bit more things with uh, with bending and things like that so time for the update so as I have to paint the the propeller so I've painted the propeller as you see here it's pretty much done almost completely balanced I still want to do some yellow propeller tips or blade tips and I have to put in something that then will hook onto the propeller shaft but that is kind of ready I've also settled on a design for the for the markings and uh, I've painted the cowling nice bright red kind of looks good I think let's see if I just present it here offer it up here there it is let's see if you can see it which means also I have to repaint the, the canopy a little bit so I started to put on the masking tape and repaint them the, the lines over it so that is uh, that is I would say pretty much done I still have to do some details but that's okay the next step is going to be to prepare the engine motor hole that is going to go in here and for that I need one brass tube that I have a small one and then the aluminium tube that I need to squeeze out the ends I'm going to be using my brand new vise and try to use the the tactic from from cliff on that so that's going to be then the next and after that is going to be the braiding of the motor something which somehow I dread because I'm not sure how to do it but anyhow I'll let you know how it goes progress update so the the canopy repainted it looks black inside and red on the outside which I think looks fine I cut out the tubes and I put them in I don't know if it can be seen so if it wasn't easy to put it in but basically here we have the brass tube holding it and then also the aluminium tube maybe I'll take it out so I can show you it wasn't easy to put in without the tissue so I can't imagine how difficult it's going to be to put it in when it's covered in tissue I have this aluminium and I did kind of squeeze it out at the, at the ends using Cliff's technique I tried to sand it down as much as possible but I still have the feeling it's a bit sharp so maybe I'll do a bit more of sanding on it and then it's going to go on here and then the basically the rubber motor will be on this and that's going to be at the end mustn't lose this already some work into it what else to share yes the propeller I've painted the propeller I've put on the yellow the yellow blade tip which is good this blade is still ever so slightly heavier so I think I might give this propeller blade maybe another another coat of paint to see if I can get it to balance a little bit more it looks good my worry is like let's see if it survives the maiden because if this crashes then it will be over so so much work going into something that I know will probably end up bad and then another point also and this is hold out to Richard so thank you Richard for your comment because it turns out that I did the nose block wrong and he's right he was looking at the plan I'm sure and he he understood it better than I did I didn't actually so actually what Richard is saying and what probably the designer Tauna wanted was that this piece I'm going to call it the donut would be glued directly on here and then the ply that I glued to the donut would actually be the only thing that holds holds itself basically into the motor so the, the nose block would be without the donut so now I have to see if I can somehow cut it out or if I can live with it like this which maybe it's okay or if I cut it out I have to then see if I would uh, cut it out through here how I would do it exactly cut it down to shape and then let basically just the central part the black part be that uh, that nose block so that's uh, a bit of work that has to be redone probably there and as I say thank you Richard for that because I, I did not understand the plans and you explained it so well in the comment that I understood it first time so so thank you for that so a bit of rework maybe there to be done or not I'm not sure I also I don't know if you noticed I painted here in black part of the fuselage because that's where the canopy is going to be and uh, then the next step is the braiding of the motor 
which I'm afraid of. Ah, and the and the hook, but the hook I think is relatively straightforward. But the braiding of the motor is the, the complex part, so let's see how it goes. I'll try to explain the progress and uh, maybe also the problem that I'm coming up against. So, I've made the hook, kind of a big one, I think you can see it there. I've connected also the propeller and I've put a little bead in between to clear the cowling. It doesn't always clear it, so I might need to change it. And I've braided the, the rubber, it's a total of 8 braids, 8, uh, eight strands, sorry. Um, so it's the same, I think it's folded over 2 or 3 times, something like that. And I've managed to load it in, in the rear, let's see if I move this without breaking it, there it is. But then the challenge that I have is that when I try to turn it, to wind it, and I have wound it also outside, I don't have a, a jig for it especially, but um, it is getting, I do manage to wind it, but only about, I'm going to say, if I count, let's say 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38, 39, 40. Already here I feel quite a lot of tension. I could probably do 10, 20 turns more, but that would only take me up to about, let's say, less than 100 turns. And what we need on this, I think here, up to 420 turns maximum, but of course different rubber and things like that. Um, it, it does produce some thrust if I let it go. It does produce thrust, it, everything wobbles, which means that the propeller is probably not well balanced. But my worry now is that the rubber is uh, either too tough, or maybe it's too thick, uh, too much rubber, I'm not sure. So that's a bit of a... Uh, of the wall I'm hitting now so I'm thinking if I can try to get another rubber maybe make another motor try it again and see and maybe also try the plastic propeller that I've got somewhere I've got to look for it and let's see if I can I can try that so a little bit of a wall that I'm hitting on this with the with the motor I saw this coming let's see if I managed to overcome it somehow or it'll become a static display model which is also possible So, time to wrap up the video. I've taken out the old motor, this is the one. Actually I was uh, testing it again and again and I did get up to close to 100 turns. So maybe it's that it's, as being very old rubber, maybe it's very, very tough and also I see the braiding is not really very good. But what I did, I, I took the, an old motor from a, from a Willow's Arrow that I did some time ago and it didn't really work very well, it crashed and the fuselage is kind of destroyed, the wing is still okay and it has also this propeller which I might be using, this is kind of the, the plan B propeller when this one breaks, because I'm sure it will break at some point so I might be using them this, you can see it's completely crooked, I don't know if you can see it but it crashed badly, if I find a video I'll put it up and, um, and basically yes, what I'll do, what I've done, I've, uh, I've braided the rubber motor from that one a little bit and I've put it in and I do get many more turns, but not much torque. Again, this is the balance that I'm still not good at getting between the, the number of turns and the torque. With this one, I managed to get what I estimate close to four seconds of, of strong pull. With this one, I'm getting much longer, but of course, not so much, not so much torque. So I've got two motors. Uh, the good thing of the motor is it can be changed. It is very fiddly to change back there because of the because it's going to be closed in. I see here also the, the rubber motor has somehow knotted itself up. I want to, you can't see it from there probably, but there's this, you can't see it. This former, you can't see it, is somehow the, the, the form, the fuselage form is somehow making that the rubber gets hooked on there. So I want to try to file that down a little bit, get the rubber motor a little bit more space and, and see if like that it works. So 
in any case I'm gonna say bittersweet a little bit like um, I think there's progress but I'm now worried if it'll ever fly or if it'll be an assisted glide if it's an assisted glide of 10 seconds or something like that it would be okay and uh, and we'll see about that but now next steps is going to be the engine cowling made up made out of uh, paper which is a challenging itself have to fix some things I, I broke here one one stringer when I was winding it and uh, and then the tissue covering which I think is going to be a long process together with the assembly the canopy the tail assembly also so I might start actually to to tissue cover the tail first and uh, we'll take it from there so in any case thank you everybody for watching and your comments and your encouragement and I'll see you next time <laughs>